Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I am your host, Jason Turner. I am available for code reviews and on-site training. In this episode, I'm going to talk about in place, what exactly it means in the standard library, and all of the places that you probably don't know that it is used. Now be sure to check out that video description for ways you can support this channel and any upcoming training or events that I might have in your area. So we are on Weektionary here, and it says that to emplace is to assign a position to something or to locate something at a particular place. Now, as far as the standard is concerned, the point of emplace is to create an object in place. That being a way to avoid copying or moving an object. And there are places that I know that you know where in place is used. And so we're going to start at the obvious and then we're going to work our way to the less obvious places and the places that you probably don't know about. So the first place that I am sure you are aware of is all of our sequence containers have an in place back. And I will demonstrate what this looks like. And I've done a previous episode on it. So by executing this code, I am saying at the end of the container, I want you to create a new string and I want you to call the constructor that takes a character followed by an integral that indicates how many copies of that character to add to the string. So I have created a vector with one string and that string should consist of 42 A's. But of course, because of implicit conversions and the confusing number of constructors that basic string has, what we've actually done is create a string that has a 42s in it. And if we look at the disassembly and compiler explorer, we can in fact see that we have a 42s. So that's unfortunate, but something to keep in mind. Let's go ahead and swap these parameters around. So that is the one that I am sure you are all familiar with, and it also applies to list, forward list, and deck. I am taking into account all of the containers, not the container adapters. They also have their own versions of these things. Now there is the set of containers that also have the ability to add things to the front of the list, and that is list, forward list, and deck, not vector. So the point here again is that it is constructing a new object at the front of this container, and it is the string that is created by calling the constructor that takes an int and a character. Now, the next thing that you might not know about is the ability for a sequence container to emplace at a specific location. So if I'm just going to call emplace, then I have to also give it the iterator that I want it to emplace before. This is the same as the insert syntax. So emplace requires an iterator. And I could do this, this would be the equivalent of in place back, or I could do this, which is the equivalent of in place front. So while vector doesn't give you an in place front, you can still say in place at the front of the list if you use the syntax. And that is because an in place at the front of the vector is potentially very costly because it has to move all of the elements by one shifting down. So that's why they didn't give us this by default. Now, the next one that you might not know about is the ability in our ordered containers, such as to emplace and let it place the object where it needs to be in that ordered container. 
I'm using ordered wrong here. This is, these are not ordered containers. These are all known as associative containers. So in this case, I am asking the standard library to construct this new string again and construct it at the appropriate place in this container. And since set is an ordered container, well, it's going to go where it needs to go to maintain the ordering of that container. Now, an interesting and important thing to note about in place on our associative containers is that it returns a pair. And the pair is an iterator to the inserted object and a Boolean saying whether or not it actually inserted a new object or if it's just returning back to you an object that already happened to be in that container. This is not the place to go into all the details about our associative containers, but it is important to note that with multi-map and multi-set, that you can actually have multiple values with the same keys, but with set and map, you cannot. So this next one is interesting and it is try in place. And now the idea is that for a map or an unordered map, it's going to see if an object with that key already exists. If it does, then it does not move the rest of the parameters in. Now let's see if we can try to do something interesting with this particular example. So for try in place, we need to pass in the key and then the arguments that construct the value. So the second call to try in place here is going to create that temporary A string. It is going to look and find that the map already contains a key with the value A. Therefore, it is not going to construct the string that would have been the value. So that is try in place. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is in place with a hint. And try in place also has an in place with a hint. So it's going to look a little bit like this. So a map is an ordered container. I have given it the key and the value with an in place. Now, if I want to create a second object here, I can do this in place hint call. And I can say, I want to create an object with the key B and this 42 A's. Let's make this 42 B's. Why not? But for in place hint, I need to give it a hint. This is approximately where I expect the object to be created. Now, for the sake of this one, since map is an ordered container, I have a pretty good idea that it needs to be created at the end of the container. So I can give it a hint and say, you're probably going to go at the end. We will spend more time in just a moment looking at this. So you can give try in place a hint as well. Now, the very last place where we need to discuss the use of in place is with our optional variant any expected kinds of things. And I'm not entirely sure what to call these. These are algebraic types, monadic things. I don't know. So I can say, yes, right now the optional is empty on line 65, on line 66. I want to construct a new string in place in that optional to avoid any copy or move that might have had to have occurred to place a value in the optional. You can use in place with our variant any expected and optional types. This covers all of the places that I know of that in place is used in the standard. And again, the point is to avoid constructing and then copying or moving an object because we want to construct it in place. And for things that are not trivial, this matters. 
And I did a talk at CVPCon a few years ago called Great C++ is Trivial. And you should probably check out that episode for more information on this particular topic. But we can't just stop here because there's definitely a question about whether or not this in place hint does anything meaningful. Now, I did just a bit of research on this and I want to show you in GCC's C++ standard library implementation that the in place function is defined in terms of in place hint container at runtime looks up approximately where this object should be stored and then it uses lower bound to find the key location and calls in place hint and uses that found iterator. So let's keep that in mind. And let's look at this benchmark that I created using QuickBench. Now I am currently in Clang 14 using GCC's standard library with O3. And the idea is that I am in placing a bunch of objects into a map. And in the first version, I'm just calling in place. In the second version, I'm calling in place hint. And I'm always telling it, expect this object to be at the end of the container because I am creating these things in sorted order. I am just incrementing an integer that is my key. And then I made a third benchmark that always gives it the wrong hint. It always gives it the beginning of the container. And you can see here that it's about seven times faster with GCC's standard library in Clang to give it the correct hint. Now, interestingly, giving it the wrong hint is still somehow faster than not giving it any hint at all, which I find confusing. If I switch to Clang's standard library, I see a much smaller change. Clang's standard library seems to be a little bit faster on average, but it doesn't really seem to use the in place hint. And I did try to navigate through the code a little bit. In place is not defined strictly in terms of in place hint like it is with GCC's standard library. So, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here, but again, giving it the wrong hint is still better than giving it no hint at all, which I find, again, rather confusing. And just for the fun of it, we will take a look at GCC with GCC standard library. And again, the in place with the correct hint is about six times faster. In place with the wrong hint is slightly slower. Well, all very interesting. Make sure you check out the video description for links to this benchmark, plus all of these examples for all the different places that in place is used in the standard library. And I hope this was a useful episode for you. Thank you for watching C++ Weekly and be sure to subscribe.